In this video, I talk about the grandfather of wargaming. All of us who are in the hobby, we like to talk about rule sets. We like to talk about different games, all the new games that come out, which version of this game is better than that version, and, and so on. We go on quite a bit. We go on during our games, we go on at the game store, we go on online and on YouTube, like right here. But how many of us really think about the history, like where Wargaming started, like its roots, like where did it start? Who started it? Where did it come from? Now, Wargaming to some degree has been around for a really long time, easily since the Middle Ages, probably even since caveman times, you know? I mean, you probably had uh, Og and he's like, all right, when we go into battle with the other tribe, we're going to do it like this and we're going to move these stones. These stones are us and these stones are going to go over here and they're going to go this far and then flank this way. And he's around the fire explaining it to the rest of them. And then Throg is in the background going, you know, I kind of like the old edition rules for movement better than the new ones here. And then, um, you know, all the cavemen kind of all looked at him and then they thought he was a witch and then they killed him. That's kind of how it went back in caveman times. But the point is, is that Wargaming's been around for like a really, really long time, sort of in some sort of amorphous uh, situation. However, if you talk to most Wargaming historians, I don't know if that's really a thing or not, but if you talk to people who look into this kind of thing, most of them will point back to H.G. Wells. Yes, that H.G. Wells. Uh, War of the Worlds in H.G. Wells. Uh, the Invisible Man, H.G. Wells. Victorian era, late 1800s, author H.G. Wells. And his, in my mind, best work, Little Wars. Now I'm going to have to read this to you off of my iPad because I own a copy of Little Wars, but I don't know where it is and the local library didn't have it. So I had to buy it for 99 cents on Kindle. So uh, Little Wars, the full title is A Game for Boys from 12 Years of Age to 150, and for that more intelligent sort of girl who likes boys' games and books. That's the subtitle underneath Little Wars. It's a great short little book that it, it basically talks about how, you know, he was a, an author at the time and he had a wife and kids and all that stuff, and kids have toys. So he had uh, a couple of sons, I think, and they had... Um, small tin and probably iron, which they probably hopefully weren't licking, uh, toy soldiers. That's kind of the way it was back then. So you had these toy soldiers and the toy soldiers had these, um, a lot of times toy soldiers were designed just to be shot at with this little spring loaded gun that fired a little wooden dowel. That was your artillery piece and you tried to knock over the, the other guys, you know, little guys, or unless you just were bored and just decided to knock over your own, you know, but that was basically it. So. H.G. was looking at him one day and he had a friend over and they had had some lunch and they were kind of looking at, um, you know, the there was a table and there were some figures on it and then they were sitting at another table and on that table was this little gun, which I'll explain. So it was called a spring breech loader and you pulled it back and cocked it and you put a little piece of wooden dowel, a little shell in there and you would fire it. And uh, his friend at the time, who is known as Mr. J.K.L., I'm not sure who that exactly is, but for brevity, I guess, that's just what he called him. So Mr. J.K.L., um, you know, they'd had some some lunch and now it's time for coffee and they're sitting there and J.K.L. is looking at this, this gun and he's looking at those models over on the other table and he decides what any, you know, red-blooded person would probably do, at least a guy, would, you know, so he starts taking shots. He fired that day a shot that still echoes around the world. An affair, let us parallel the cannonade of Valmy and call it the cannonade of Sandgate. That was where they lived at the time. A shooting between opposed ranks of soldiers, a shooting not very different in spirit, but how different in results from the prehistoric warfare of catapult and garter. But suppose, said his antagonists, suppose somehow one could move the men and therewith opened a new world of belligerence. Now, the fact that there's not a metal album out there, like a record, music, a metal band, that has an album called New World of Belligerence, that, that blows my mind. And I looked it up. There's not. There's not a single metal band in the world with an album called 
new world of belligerence, which I think is sort of a crime. So if you're out there and you're in a metal band, you're welcome. So this book is full, of, besides the fact that it's a very small, quick read book, it's this great process about him initially thinking, huh, you know, a person could do something with these toys that my kids play with and lick all the time. And, um, you know, we, uh, well, there could be rules and not just shooting for fun and for skill, but actual rules and reasons why things might happen. At some point he works with another friend um, and that friend is like, well, I don't know, it's sort of fun to shoot this little gun, but it's not that big of a deal. And they have a little bit of a, of a lark with it. And then he has another friend who is sickly. He's kind of ill and he doesn't do things a lot outside. He's basically an indoor kid. So like many of us. And uh, that's where things really start to kind of take off. But the writer had in those days a very dear friend, a man too ill for long excursions or vigorous sports, of a very sweet, companionable disposition, a hearty jester and full of the spirit of play. To him, the idea was broached more fruitfully. We got two forces of toy soldiers, set out a lumpish encyclopedic land upon the carpet. Which I can just picture in my head, just a bunch of encyclopedias making hills and stuff. And the fact that it's called a lumpish encyclopedic land upon the carpet kills me. I say, anyway. Uh, and began to play. We arranged to move in alternate moves. First one moved all his force and then the other. An infantryman could move one foot at each move, a cavalryman two, a gun two. It might fire six shots. And if a man was moved up to touch another man, then we tossed up, which is to say flipped a die, basically a four up, and determined which man was dead. So we made a game, which was not a good game, but which was very amusing once or twice. The men were packed under their own lee of fat volumes, while the guns, animated by a spirit of their own, banged away at any exposed head or prowled about in search of a shot. Occasionally, men came into combat with remarkable results. Rash is the man who trusts his life to the spin of a coin. One impossible paladin slew in succession nine men and turned defeat to victory to the extreme exasperation of the strategist who had led those victims to their doom. This inordinate factor of chance eliminated play. The individual freedom of guns turned battles into scandals of scrouching concealment. There was too much cover afforded by the books and vast intervals of waiting while the players took aim. And yet, there was something about it. It was a game crying aloud for improvement. So you can see here in this earliest part of the book where he's just like, this is a game, this is a thing. He's got the game designer's idea. This is basically a diary of him thing. You know, like if I started doing this and if we did it like this and, and it goes on like this for quite a while. The first half of the book is him saying, well, what if we did it like this? And what if we did this? And we made these changes. And then he went through all that kind of stuff. And in, there's also great pictures in here. You can see some amazing photographs, some of them, which evidently I think his wife took of the stuff that they built. They start talking about country, which we would say is game board. You know, you, we set up the country and then we have these buildings made out of, they started off with books, but eventually they made things out of cardstock and wood. And they started doing a lot of stuff like that. They started playing outside. There's great pictures of Victorian H.G. Wells wearing a hat and the whole deal down on, the, on his knees in the grass playing amongst these little buildings and stuff like that. And it's super cool. The middle part of the book is where he actually lays down the rules that they came up with. You could play this game. You can play Little Wars. There's rules for it. It's not just a novel about how it's fun to push dice around and whatnot. He doesn't really mess with dice in this. But the fact is, is that he's pushing tin figures around and then he actually writes instructions and you can play that game. And then what really blew me away next, and I had forgotten about this because I owned this book for a long time, but I hadn't read it in quite some time. The next section of the book is, I kid you not, a bat rap. It is a battle report. It is called um, The Battle of Hook's Farm. And it is going through pretty much step by step a battle using these rules with some pictures and all kinds of stuff. And it's just really interesting to kind of see what he did and how he did it and, and worked it all out. It's just amazing to kind of watch it and, you know, knowing what we know now as people who are war gamers and it's an okay and it's a growing industry. But the fact is that to many of us, we've been used, doing it for 10 to 20 years. And just to see this guy, like you can just read like as he's going, you know, we could do this and just kind of knowing where it ends up and what he would think of it 
looking forward into the future. I, I just can't even imagine it. Then towards the end, there's a chapter called Ending with a Sort of Challenge. And this, I think, is spectacular. I'm just going to read it. I could go on now and tell of battles copiously. In the memory of the one skirmish that I have given, I do but taste blood. I would like to go on to a large, thick book. It would be an agreeable task. Since I'm the chief inventor and practicer, so far, of Little Wars, there has fallen to me a disproportionate share of victories. But let me not boast. For the present, I have done all that I meant to do in this manner. It is for you, dear reader, now to get a floor, a friend, some soldiers, and some guns, and show, by a groveling devotion, your appreciation of this noble and beautiful gift of a limitless game that I have given you. The prose. It's just, I mean, the entire thing is filled with, with, with stuff like that. I wish so much that many of the books that I read, rules books, four games, skirmish, army size, whatever, had some prose like this in it. Even if it was just in the fluff, obviously you wouldn't want the rules to be written this way. And in this book, the rules are not really written this way. They're a lot more along the lines of what we think of as a rule system. But if you can get it, like seriously, I got this for 99 cents on Kindle. I'm sure you can find it cheap if you're like, I need to have a print version. When I was looking online, you know, five, six, eight, ten 10 bucks. It's basically not copyrighted anymore from what I understand. So it's a lot cheaper because basically anybody can produce it. The version that I can't find that is somewhere in my house, I actually believe was published by Steve Jackson Games, the guys that do Munchkin and Car Wars and GURPS and all that stuff. If you can get a hold of it, I think you'd really enjoy it. And it's really interesting as Wargamers for us to see kind of how this was all started in the modern era. This is Victorian era. This is late 1800s. But to see the thought processes and the ideas, and um, and for any of you who've any, done any kind of design or thought about how to make your own game, just to see the process of this well-known author kind of going through and saying, well, this is how I was going to do it, and this is kind of what we thought to do, and we changed this because of this. It's just super interesting. So if you've got any interest in wargaming history at all, or if you just want something that's, like I said, it's a pretty small book. It's a short read, but it's a lot of fun. I would really, really push you to go out and find Little Wars um, and just give it a read because it's really, it's just spectacular from an aspect of just enjoyment of writing, you know, reading the writing that he does, but also just from sort of seeing the history and how that works. And, you know, who knows, maybe it's something that you're actually going to sit down and actually really play. 